Chapter 1.2 The Roles and Muscles in Movement In this video we will look at how muscles work in pairs and also the terminology that we need to be familiar with for when muscles are producing movement. Okay, just so a quick recap on some things we have previously looked at. Um, first thing, muscles are connected to bones using tendons. So we said that tendons are these connective tissues that allow the bone to be attached to the muscles. When the muscles contract, these then pull on the bone through the tendons uh, that they're connected to, which then produce movement at the joint. So it's important to remember that when the bones are moving, it is at a joint that this movement is taking place. So, with muscles then, the first thing we need to know about muscles is that muscles can only pull, they cannot push. So we tend to think about um, actions in sport, perhaps with a scrum where we're, you know, where we're trying to push the opposition back. This is uh, a result of muscles pulling in different directions that's then producing this kind of pushing effect. Muscles by themselves can't actually produce a pushing um, effect. They actually only pull on the bone which then produces the movement. For a bone to return to its original position then, there needs to be another muscle that moves in the opposite direction. Okay, so if we think about our, our arm being pulled in one direction, uh, another muscle has to work in the opposite direction in order to move it back to its original position. So we have muscles working in pairs, and these pairs are called antagonistic pairs. So antagonistic pairs is a, is a, a term that you need to be familiar with. So when we talk about antagonistic muscle action, um, we're basically saying that one muscle works while another muscle relaxes. Okay, So one muscle contracts or shortens, whilst the other muscle that it's paired up with uh, relaxes and lengthens in size. Some kind of common examples um, that you need to know in terms of antagonistic muscles are the biceps and triceps and the hamstrings and quadriceps. So these are two examples of antagonistic pairs. As you can see with um, the biceps and triceps, when the biceps is contracted, the triceps are relaxed. Okay, and in that particular um, example, you can see there's flexion at the elbow. Then when we've got extension at the elbow, we've got the biceps relaxing, so they're getting longer and lengthening and we've got the triceps contracting, getting shorter. And we can see this a little bit better in this particular video here now. So when the biceps contract, there's flexion at the elbow, and when the triceps contract, there's extension with the opposite muscle, there's an antagonistic pair with, relaxing. So let's watch that again. So while one muscle contracts, the other muscle relaxes. And you can see the change in the length of the muscle. So the contracted muscle gets shorter and fatter, the muscle that's relaxing gets longer and thinner. Some terminology then we need to know, particularly when we're talking about antagonistic um, pairs and antagonistic muscle action. First of all, we have what we call the agonist. And the agonist is the muscle that is contracting or shortening. And it's also known as the prime mover. So a good way of kind of remembering this is um, the agonist, um, the, word, or the word agonist is similar to the word agony. And the word agony comes about through working and being in pain. So if we think about that kind of that pain and being in agony, we'll think about the agonist. So this is the muscle that is working. We then have the antagonist, which is the muscle that is relaxing, which is obviously the muscle that's lengthening and getting thinner. Okay, so the agonist is the muscle that's contracting, the antagonist is the muscle that's relaxing. So you can see in the diagram there, um, flexion of the elbow, the agonist is the muscles, because that's, sorry, the agonist is the biceps, because that's the muscle that's contracting, the antagonist is the triceps, because that's relaxing. So then when the opposite happens and there's extent, extension of the arm at the elbow, the um, agonist is now the triceps because that's contracting and pulling on the radius and ulna to extend the arm, whilst the biceps is the antagonist because it's relaxing. Some other key terms we need to know then. Uh, first of all is the fixator, and this is the muscle that stabilises the joint. So while there's movement taking place at the joint, we have muscles that kind of keep that particular joint stable. So in the case of um, 
the biceps and triceps when they're working near the shoulder and the elbow. We have the trapezius, um, which is acting as a fixator at the shoulder. We also have what we call the origin and the insertion. Now the origin is the end of the muscle that's attached to the bone that is stable. So if we look at the diagram, we might have to get into, zoom into this a little bit closer. So if we look at this particular diagram here, we can see that the origin of the biceps is connected to the scapula. So that the scapula is the most stable bone around the, uh, around the shoulder joint. Whereas the insertion of the biceps, we can see is connected um, to the lower arm, the resin and all the which is the, the, the kind of bones which will be moving. Okay, so when our biceps contract, it's not a scapula that's moving, it's our radius and all that lower arm that is flexing at the elbow. Similarly, um, if we look at the gastrocnemius, we've got the origin of the gastrocnemius um, connected to the femur, whilst the insertion of the gastrocnemius is connected um, to our tarsals down in our feet. So that when the gastrocnemius contracts, so when it's working, it's shorter, it produces plantar flexion uh, of the foot at the ankle, so the toes are pointed. Okay then, so we've looked at um, how, well, kind of, first of all, identify that muscles pull, they cannot push, and as a result of that, they have to work in pairs, and these pairs are called antagonistic uh, pairs because it sees one muscle contracting whilst the other muscle relaxes. We've then looked at some of the key terms, so the agonist, which is the muscle that's contracting, also known as the prime mover, the antagonist, which is the muscle that's relax relaxing, we looked at the fixator, the muscle that stabilises the joint, we looked at the origin, which is the end of the muscle that's connected to a stable bone, and the insertion, which is the opposite end of the muscle that's connected to the bones that move. So you need to go away now and complete your flip learning mat and more importantly you need to watch this video a number of times so that when you come to the lesson you've not just got a completed flip learning mat, you actually know this particular topic off by heart and you can confidently start to apply your knowledge in the tasks that are set within the lesson.